Hi, I'm Tammy Fellers. And I'm Renee Smith. And we're math consultants here at ESDAC in Hutchison, Kansas. And today we'd like to show you um, some small group activities that we've created that you could do with your students. And today we're going to show you flip-flop facts for whole number addition and subtraction. And multiplication and division. First we'll show you our deck for um, addition and subtraction. Both of the decks include all of the number combinations between 0 and 10. And so you have 66 cards in each of the decks. But you will put a pile of cards for the students and they'll draw one. And on the first day, you'll, you'll see that there are three numbers on the card, one of which is in a square. And that's the answer to the addition problem. And so the student, student one will cover up that square and show their partner and ask them for the sum of the two numbers showing. I have seven and eight showing right now. And so I would, if I was her partner, I would say that the answer was 15. And one of the questions we feel is very important is to follow up with, and so how did you know 15? What strategy did you use, Renee? Well, I knew that 7 plus 7 is 14 because I know my doubles, which is one of those things that kids pick up on fairly easily. Absolutely. And so I know that I need one more to make 15. Great. And so part number, number one went, Renee would draw a card then and cover the box for me, the square for me. And so I'm holding a card that says 9 plus 3. And so I tell her 12. And I ask her strategy. And I say, you know, I knew one more made 10. I still had two left over, so I added those two on to get 12. Okay. So as we, as we do that with students, or as if we do that whole group activity, or if they're doing that with small group, in their small group workstations, they're going to come up with many strategies. Some children will still be counting on. Um, some people, some children may actually have memorized their facts. And, and so lots of different strategies can come out during an activity like that. And an extension to this is we want to create that flexibility in thinking and about the inverse relationships between addition and subtraction. Is So now, after they've done the cards and, and you're ready to allow them to move on, this time I'm going to hold a card up and I'm going to cover a number that's not in the box. And so now Renee knows 10 is showing and 19 is inside of the box. What does she need to add on to 10 to get 19? And so. Um, children may do a lot of different things. At this point, if they know the inverse relationship between addition and subtraction, they might subtract the 10 from the 19, or they might start at the 10 and count on uh, until they get to 19 and realize they've counted on 9. One of the things we would encourage you is please have tools or available for students to use. Um, they may, some students may choose unifix cubes, others may choose a counter, um, a number line. Make sure those tools are available at the workstation. The multiplication division cards work the exact same way, except for this time the product is in the square. And so I first am going to start off by covering up that square. Again, I have a 7 and an 8 showing. And so I'm going to show that to Renee and ask her for the I, answer to this multiplication problem. And I love how she picked the hardest card <laughs> practically in the deck. For, for a lot of kids, 8 times 7 is, is fairly difficult. Uh, but we know that that is 56, and so I assume you're going to ask me for my strategy yes, again. Yes, please share your strategy. And so if I didn't know that fact, one of the common ways kids work up to 8 times 7 is to start at 8 times 5, which is a known fact that they might have at their disposal, which would be 40. Uh, add another group of 8, which would be 8 times 6 is 48, and then another group of 8 to get them to the 56. And they may have some counting on to do at that point, but that is an acceptable strategy. So. You can do the extension and cover up one of the factors so that then they can either turn that into a division problem or some may still do kip, skip counting. Multiple strategies can be used. Each deck comes with a task sheet which includes the directions, the extensions, possible student strategies they may use, and it also includes some student accountability piece. We know in small group instruction it's very important to hold students accountable for the learning when they're not in the teacher-led station. And so we've given you some ideas of how you might do that. Do you have anything else to share with them today, Renee, about flip-flop facts I for think, whole numbers? I think that's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us.